you what it is youtube it's your boy nitsy coming back with another video here today on the channel i wanted to ask you guys a question what is the hardest part of mixing for you drop it down below what do you feel like is just that one thing that's not making your mixes sound pro you feel me i think it's always a situation where um you know in the beginning of me mixing, I struggled to get my vocals to be forward, to be present, also to get my vocals to have that sparkly top end sheen without getting that harshness. So I wanted to ask you guys a question and really start to get a pulse and figure out like what is the, the hardest part of mixing that has got you guys kind of stuck in the road. Because the thing about mixing is just a journey. You feel me? It's just a journey. I remember I mean, like a couple years ago, I really didn't even know how to mix. Like in 2019, 2020, I didn't, I still didn't know how to mix. The only thing I really had going for me is I was working in the studio and people just like my customer service. I was having fun with them. So that kept them wanting to keep coming to the studio. But the mixes, they wasn't, they wasn't sounding that good. You feel me? So that's why I started my channel because I started to really, you know, no pun intended, channel, channel my thoughts a little bit. You feel me? Like, damn, like if I was starting out again, like what would I actually want to know and not none of the bs because i used to always go on youtube i used to always go on youtube you know when i wasn't in the studio i used to go on youtube and i used to be like bro i'm trying to figure out how to mix in mix and i feel like the videos were always horrible and i felt like i wasted a couple years trying to figure out you know the the answers to my problems when usually the answers are kind of right there in front of you you feel me i feel like a lot of the times people are overthinking compression and eq reverb all of these stuff that we be using i feel like people overthink it because there's too much information out there and also you know i felt like a part of getting your vocals to sound professional is also you acting professional you feel me like the stuff that you can control like for example being on time to the session that's the thing about being an engineer. <laughs> you got to be the first one in the studio and you got to be the last one leaving. It's a crazy, you know, job being an engineer because you got to be at the studio to get all the equipment set up and stuff like that. You feel me? Make sure that the vibe is feeling good. The lights are set up. So as soon as the rapper walks in or if you just record yourself too, you know, making sure you already got the beat downloaded, make, making sure you already got the session laid out, you know, can make the whole creative process a lot easier. So what is that that hard part for you guys right now? I'm trying to figure out. When it comes to vocal presence, I always struggle with vocal presence. I always felt like my vocals was buried inside of the beat. So it's, it's kind of crazy when I see people um, come in my comments and they say, oh, I just want to figure out how to get the vocals that could cut through when it's always a situation where you got to understand the material you're working with. You got to be honest with yourself and also understand what type of voice that you got, because you might not have that voice that just cuts right through the mix. For example, somebody like Future. If you listen to Future's music, he don't really be having no doubles, no, like, he just has a voice that cuts through. Some people have a voice that cuts through. Some people have a voice that doesn't cut through, and it kind of feels like the beat is, you know, uh, at a buffet, and it's about to swallow and eat up, eat up the vocal. You feel me? So... The, the way I was able to learn how to get my vocals to sound present is by understanding that it's not one thing. If people are always trying to check for that one trick, you know, but the moment I realized that it's not just one trick, it's my mindset. That's when I started to get my vocals to be present. That's when stuff started to work. When I started looking at the bigger picture, you know, as an engineer, mixing is like Tetris. It's like a bunch of different blocks. You feel me? What they all coming down the vocals, the ad libs, they keep coming down on, onto the block, which is the you know the uh, the ad libs. I mean, no, nah, it's it's coming down to the um, what is it called? The beat. You feel me? And the parts are always moving and changing and stuff like that. So once you start to understand that the parts are are always changing, right? In Tetris, you know, okay, I'm gonna put this block right here, even though it don't look like it's gonna work. You feel me? I'm going to put that block a certain way so that when that other block come through, it's going to fit. You feel me? It's all about making things fit and developing a mindset. So that's why I think I wanted to ask y'all this question. Like, what are y'all struggling with from y'all vocals being professional? You feel me? Because sometimes it's also about you know, being smart, not focusing on one thing. You got, you got your hunchback going on. You on the laptop. You just trying to make, you trying to put, push space bar and all that shit. When in reality, when you're recording somebody, what you always want to do is you want to look at them. 
Like, if you don't look at the rapper while they rapping, you're not giving you're giving yourself no chance because most people don't know how to rap into a microphone. They come up to the studio, I'm a jumping dude. Hey, what it sound like? You feel me? But you as an engineer, you're responsible for that. So sometimes you're not even giving yourself a chance if you're not paying attention to the rapper. That's why when I record people, I never use a vocal booth. I'm like, nah, 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 come in, come into the, the main room with everybody. I always play it off so casually because I like to see the rapper as they're rapping because sometimes the reason why the vocals don't sound present is because the motherfucker don't know how to rap into the microphone. You know, give yourself a little bit of space so that all the plosives and, and the stuff don't, poo, poo, you feel me, come all the way up and be harsh. You feel me? Sometimes all the harshness is coming because you on the, the motherfucker on top of the microphone, you could easily prevent that as an engineer by telling somebody to back up. Oh, I see why that take ain't sound good. It's not, <laughs> let me check my compressor and my EQ. Maybe it's sometimes you just keeping it simple and looking at the rapper and be like, all right, you got to back up a little bit from the microphone, you know? And oftentimes too, as an engineer, you could tell if the artist likes the take instantly from just sitting there and looking at their body language and just paying attention. I think this is very important because people always try to, they, people keep forgetting about there's a whole outside world that you got to think about too. They, they only thinking in the box. You feel me? That's what a lot of this information does. It keeps your mind in the box. You feel me? Um, that's why I don't like uh, when people say compression is all about taming peaks and EQ is all about rolling off mud. Like we done heard that shit a million times and I keep bringing it up because when I was, trying to become an engineer and get my stuff to sound professional, those type of like videos and information really was hurting me really badly. They was hurting me because they was keeping my mind in the box. They was keeping me in my mind in the box. It's like if you had a painter, right? You had a really talented painter, but the person is just a, a young painter and he, he, he over here really learning. You feel me? And you're like, okay, we're going to teach you how to paint. And we tell him to paint a building, right? You're an engineer. You're trying, you're trying to paint the vocal how you want to paint it. And then they say, no, 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 no. Don't do it like that. Don't do it like that. If you want to paint a building, you got to start with a line right here. You feel me? Sometimes when you give people that definitive rules, that starts to hurt them a lot. So maybe that's why your vocals and your mixes don't sound professional because your mind is in the box. You're not thinking creatively, you know, seeing EQ creatively, seeing compression, seeing the analog model plugins creatively. That's what I always try to tell y'all. Like, I try to get y'all to see it creatively, like a CLA 76. Like, oh, you could use that to make your vocals brighter. Oh, you could use this uh, Fairchild to make this shit. Like, I'm trying to help you open up your mind because... That's what society does. That's what public school system does. That's what, you know, people's parents do, family do, like friends. Everybody just tries to keep your mind in a box. So it's kind of like sometimes you're trying to learn how to engineer, which is a thing that you need to have your mind open to different vocals, different techniques and sounds that is making it impossible for you to get it to sound professional because your mind is in a box. You feel me? Your creativity is in a box because the whole world is doing that to you. You feel me? So that's why I just wanted to ask you guys today, you know, just kind of comparing my story to y'all. When I started out in the studio, I wasn't really that good. I didn't know how to get my vocals to be bright. Everything was just harsh and cold and bad. And maybe sometimes why your mixes don't sound professional is because you're walking into a blind room right? Because you don't have good monitoring. You know, having a good pair of um, headphones is important. I have these AKG, I started out with these AKG uh, K240s, and these are a very flat pair of headphones. And sometimes, depending on what headphones you have, right, the headphones that you record with, you might not be able to mix with that. You feel me? Because headphones that you record with, they supposed to make you feel good. They supposed to have that big booty bass. You feel me? They supposed to have that pretty sparkly Tinkerbell top end so you can feel good while you rapping the beat. It's hitting harder than what it really is. And then, you feel me? Maybe you might want to have an extra pair of flat headphones like an AKG uh, 240 that is balanced. It's balanced. It, it doesn't tell you, oh, the top end already sounds good. And then you go play it in the car and it sounds like a whole new song. You feel me? Um... Also, when it comes to headphones, I have these other headphones right here. I have the um, the uh, Neumann NDH 30s, and this is like a crazy pair of headphones. This pair of headphones costs a lot, but for me, it was worth it because in my studio, right, my home studio, when I'm not working in the real studio most of the time, 
I don't have like acoustically treated room, bro. Like all of these vocal templates, <laughs> I don't have an acoustically treated room. Like don't let this stuff fool fool you, bro. There is no acoustic treatment in here, bro. Like there's literally none, right? And the thing about it too is the monitoring, bitch. You feel me? I use these headphones because I can't hear no bass in my room. You feel me? Like I can't hear that and low and accurately. So I got me a pair of headphones only just to hear the bass. And this shit is like having a subwoofer on your goddamn head, boy. On your head. It helps you hear that big booty bass perfectly. And then I have a pair of um, Neumann KH80s, which is a very flat pair of monitors. But that's the thing as an engineer, you feel me? You need something that's going to accurately tell you what's there. So if you, you know, maybe you have a pair of headphones that ain't telling you the harshness that's there. That's why, you know, your, your vocals can't sound professional because the tools that you're using to see the mix don't even tell you what's really there. And that's what's hurting you. So it's a bunch of different things. The monitoring, the information, your mindset, you know, also, you know, understanding the source material, watching the rapper rap. These are some of the things that I really struggled with in the beginning. But when I fixed it, I started to see progress in my mixes and being consistent and also having it to sound like how it is right now where I'm, I could consistently get any sound, you feel me? Any template I do, boom, it sounds exactly like the person every time, boom, like the mix sounds exactly like it every time. If somebody says, I want to get that sound in, boom, I could get it consistently because it's all about those little things. It's not about just that one thing, that one trick. You know, it's all about the whole bigger picture. So I just want to say thanks a lot for being a great part of my YouTube family. I want y'all to drop it down below. Tell me what y'all struggling with so I could keep, you know, pushing and pushing and try to give y'all that information that, that is really going to help y'all.